Hey everybody, little different opening for you this week. So it's been a pretty heavy week overall in general. Uh, there's been a lot going on. So here in Office Hours, we're all about you being well, being better just as a creative. And if you need to turn off the stream, do it, leave. Uh, come back later, there's always a replay. So if you need to go take a break, start your weekend early, just decompress a little bit, you can do that. We also have some episodes about mental health. If you'd like to watch those, we'll drop one over in the chat over there. And then you also can just, uh, on YouTube, uh, Adobe Office Hours, mental health, and we have a couple episodes for that. So if you need to, Wonderful. take some time, uh, chill out. But today, Nick, what are we doing today? We're gonna tackle Photoshop again like a whole new level, correct? A Last whole, week. Yes, it is. <laughs> Were you gonna start singing a whole new world? <laughs> I was just about to, you know me all too well. Um, so yes, we will be in Photoshop, which is gonna be super fun today. And what are we creating in Photoshop? Because we've been doing this series called Creative Basics 201, where we teach you Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, but then we go hands-on. What are we getting hands-on with today, Nick? Yeah, we're taking it back to our Mystic Cafe, and we're gonna show you guys some great things you can use Photoshop for in social media and all the assets you can create. Like everything we do, we give you the intro kind of one into the program, and then we show you some really great applications that you could use. And I think we got some really fun ones today. We've kind of reinvented Mystic Cafe, and then we're gonna go back and forth and show you some tips and tricks on how to keep it all branded and look really good online. Yep, and just to recap, if you've never joined us before, we've been working through this whole year pretty much. We're almost halfway through, excuse me. That's incredible. Um, and we are doing creative basics. So we're teaching you how to use the basics and then kind of level up. So we're at intermediate now, and then we'll be doing advanced in the next round. But the project we've been coming back to is a project that we came up with at the beginning as a community, and it is the Mystic Rescue Cafe. Um, it is a cafe that serves coffee and treats that helps to save endangered animals. Uh, and we have kind of a fantasy theme around it to hope that no more animals need to become mystic. So that's the concept that we're working with. We would love for you to design with us. And Nick, if they want to design with us today, where should they oh. go to post their work? Right there at our little Discord channel. You see it right there. It's discord.gg slash ACC. And look at that. There's everybody chiming in. We've got a homework section. We've got a classroom chat. Uh, we might even bring you online if you are in the audio room, correct? Oh yeah, if you have any uh, questions or you wanna hang out, chat with us. Um, today is a very like open loosey goosey episode. So if you would like to ask some questions about design or get some advice, hop into this classroom chat right here and one of our moderators uh, should be in there to let us know that you wanna come on. So let Excellent. me know if you wanna come on the show, ask a question, we can address it. If you have a question about Photoshop, you get stuck on something, you wanna know how to do something, we'd love to bring you on and show you live how how you can solve that problem. Wonderful. Um, all right, Nick. So that is the maximum amount of talking that we can do at the beginning of an episode before we start getting angry comments. <laughs> we know our cutoff. We, we know, know our cutoff. We're, we're aware. We know. We know what's up. Um, all right. So hop into that voice chat, um, which you can do again right over here. It says classroom chat and discord. You can join that classroom chat and ask some questions. But let's go ahead and hop in today. And where are we starting? I know that today is a Photoshop day. Yeah. But we're cheating a little oh, bit. Did we want to show some good examples though first? Oh, or... Nick. N look at Nick, everyone. I'm, look at Nick. I'm trying as hard as I can to stay on track today. He's a, trying. We're, we're, we're all a, trying. It's a crazy end of the week, but we're going we're gonna to help each other out here. Yeah. So let's let's show some examples. Uh, and these are just some good examples that we found of good social media that we enjoy to look at. So uh, Nick, what account is this? What do they do? And why did we pick them? Yeah, this is good type. And I think this is a great spot for artist discovery. They are really great in the forefront of putting out cool hand letters that maybe you don't know of. But what's great is they've recently not only rebranded, but they've taken that whole rebrand into a refresh of their social media campaign. You can see when there is a statement, when there is an announcement, when there's a contest, um, when they need to build a carousel or two, right? Um, there is a fantastic clean aesthetic to there and you start to get used to it. I think that's the thing we like to see, particularly with businesses and brands that are trying to be somewhat in the forefront of this world on design. What, what do you like about what's happening here? Yeah, I love the consistency that you can see in these mm -hmm. posts that 
it is oh it's animated uh, yeah that it is consistent there is something that like tracks through that feels like the brand but then yeah. it also has some variation um and so i think it's really cool and these animations are awesome that they're including oh, them but you killer. can tell that it's part of kind of a template that they are using to create their social media and so that's what we're going to be working um and it looks like Excellent. the it looks like the Discord uh, link isn't working. Sorry about that. We'll get that uh -oh. fixed. Uh, not sure what's going on there. Um, but you can join our Discord if we can get a link and drop it in chat. Question mark. Um, that'd be cool. Uh, all right. So this is good type. Go follow them. Awesome example. Next up, we want to talk about brand new. This is if if you don't yes. follow brand new, they're like. Um, they're like what Nick and I want to be when we grow up, right? Office Hours yeah, started yeah. out as kind of like a design portfolio yeah. review, like kind of thing. This is what we really want to be in our hearts. Yes, um, yes. And yes, that's that's it. Uh, we can so, aspire at the same time. Look at that. Hold this on. is great. I'm going to go ahead and just stop the stream so we can all realize, what is this? What is happening here? Oh, you didn't see that? No. Ritz and that's Oreos? That's got to taste absolutely disgusting no i'm so I'm into sorry. it i'm so into oh, it Nick. no i'm I can't. so into it I okay can't even. You, can, you don't mix those two they they come from totally it's savory and sweet anyway who, with, who is with me no it's that? okay team, it's okay to be wrong it's okay to be wrong tell us um, tell us team team nick or team hawk let us know in, in chat <laughs> yeah all right chat yeah chat let us know um and it looks like our discord bring is link is just like straight up broken so we'll fix oh, it for no. next week but it looks like we are dropping discord.com slash invite slash acc might work uh, if you want to use that instead uh, so I love this because of the frames. This is an yeah. easy hack if you are running so social media is to just use frames for everything, right? Um, totally. If you have tuned in to Adobe Live and actually here, let me just real quick, let me pull something up and I'm gonna show you something. Um, so this is gonna pull up us for a second, but here's what I wanna show you. If you've noticed something, and this is me preaching what I, doing what I preach or whatever it is, uh, you're saying, I love using frames to create cohesion in social media. So if you look at the thumbnails for Adobe Live, they now will all include a frame that is corresponding to the program or discipline that you're working in. This is one of the first things that I did. We I came on the team and we started working on thumbnails and I said, we need, Frames. Frames are the easiest way to pull stuff together and to help yeah. your audience understand where they want to go, right? So yes. again, easy hack. I've been doing this in social media work forever and you can see it literally happening in the thumbnails for Adobe Live. We use it to help give information. And I think frames are really, really good at that. Oh yeah, that graphic element just instantly tells you and i think if you get used to it as a viewer you know exactly oh the oranges are illustrator or the blues are photoshop or yep. whatever it might be and you get i think that's subliminal sometimes you get used to it very quickly we we scroll like crazy something's got to make us stop yep you know? absolutely um yeah little little small things to make big impacts so the last yes. one that we want to look at is uh our friends at cropcon we love cropcon um here on the show and cropcon does a great job with their social media uh, and I think conferences are a great place to look if you're looking for social media inspiration. Conferences yes. are always a great way. What do you like about these, Nick? Uh, I know it immediately when I see it, particularly with they have the highlight to show off either a guest speaker or someone talking. Um, the neat thing about it too is then there's full frame, just let the art speak for itself. Uh, so I think you know category, which is which, what's going to be there. I know I'm going to probably see um, the carousel after maybe one of the guest speakers, and it's going to maybe have some of their work. So you're anticipating a lot of these things, which I really think is just fantastic. Yep. I like the, I like the, I love the typography. I love the color choice. Uh, to me, it has a brand and it really, really sticks to it. Yep, so absolutely. That's, that's all you need. Yep, and brands are all about kind of consistency in social media. So I wanna point out a couple things that are happening here, right? So yeah. let's look at this image and pick out what are the elements they're using to create a cohesive and engaging social media presence. So yeah. in the image, we have this kind of overlap effect. We've got Collage. this half print kind of effect that's on a lot of yep. stuff. We have the logo that's multiplied. Then we have the typography, the color, and then this little accent kind of border at the bottom. So yep. as we're working I, today, keep in yeah. mind elements, right? Social media is all about totally. using elements to kind of pull stuff together. And so that's what we're gonna be doing. Excellent. Sorry, it sounded Let's like you it. had something else to say, Nick, and I cut oh, you Oh, I was just gonna say, in that collage, I was able to find, go to every single one of those things while attending crop. So now I look at it and go, I know those places. I know those places, <laughs> they're real. Uh, all right, so. Oh, yeah. 
I'm in Photoshop and today is about Photoshop. I'm yes. going to let Nick cheat because Nick yes. uh, Nick likes to, you know, find some little shortcuts here and there. And Nick, I am all about the shortcuts. My name was Scrap. My nickname was Scrap in in college, by the way, it. because I would scrap anything together possible however I needed to. And I'm going to do it again today because I'm more comfortable in actually designing an illustrator and then I'm going to take everything and show you how I take these and turn them into PSDs and I can really manipulate and have fun and make these great for my client to use as well with smart objects with live type and they can mess these things around with and yep. to me it's comfortable yeah you so know? we'll be working a little bit illustrator a little bit photoshop and if you want some bonus points you could do all of this in adobe express and we'll show you some adobe yeah. express at the end um we're, nick we're hitting all the products today so I, illustrator I to photoshop it. photoshop to express uh, specifically we'll be talking about content scheduler it's a new new uh service it's freaking Perfect. amazing. So we're going to do that today. Yeah. Nick. And then we're going to take it all into Arrow and then and we'll be done. And then it's 3D <laughs> and then we're going to be making a video of it. No, we can't. Not We don't have enough time exactly. for that. Uh, let's go ahead and hop in. Talk a little bit about what you created here sure. and kind of just the thought process behind it. So those that are working in Photoshop or Adobe Express can understand why yes. you built these the way that you did. These are all set up to be exported into Photoshop. We'll do that in like a minute. And I just want to show you really quick how I did this was I basically made three layers. My smart objects are basically just white squares in the background, because that's what I'm gonna use when they're in Photoshop to basically let my client drop in a picture and they don't have to do any cropping, anything like that. The next thing I did was I built just some simple frames. They are on the next layer above. And then above there, I just call them extras. And these are everything as far as the Mythic Cafe logo, some of these unique ones. And you can see that they're just there as beyond like kind of like extras that are layered on top. I want to make sure that these are all individually kind of um, adaptable and uh, changeable once we get them into Photoshop. And yep. then I just and put live text as well. Here's, this is such a hot take. I'm just going to say the yeah. sentence and y'all can get mad at me. Graphic design and especially social media, it's just scrapbooking. It's, do you remember it, like, it is like 10 know, years ago, so every mom was like, I have to scrapbook. Yep. And they had like the, the whole punches and the stamps. That's all that this is. So when you're exactly. building for social media, save yourself some time and build in layers, build in stacks. Think yeah. of things as stickers, as overlays, yes. as hole punches. Don't just design the graphic. Think of it in layers so and how you can apply yeah. those in other places. Exactly. So here I am. I'm just putting the finishing touches. We'll get our little horsey guy in here. Maybe we'll put him in on now. Nah, we don't need him on that one. I'm just going to keep him on that one. So I've got everything ready to go. And these are my three layers as we've produced them here. Got a great little color palette. This one, we're going to do a little bit of a merch mock up and drop it in there. But what I'm going to show you is this. I'm going to take this first one here. And actually, I'm going to do the new menu one. And then what we'll do is um, I'm going to let Andrew take it from there afterwards. And he's going to show you how to do some brand color in there as well for the photography. So all you have to do is you're going to export and export as. And what you're going to get is this little here. And you're going to go right down to Photoshop PSD. OK, Ooh. I'm saving it in the folder I've created. And I'm going to use artboards because right now all I want to do is number two, which is the new menu one. So in here, I've got range two plus two to two. I'm going to hit export. And then most importantly, keeping it to RGB because we're going to be using these all on uh, digital. And we want to make sure the layers are preserved. So flattening this will give you no editability in Photoshop. But if I keep it all here and have that ready, it's going to go there and basically do everything like that. So now I can go into my Photoshop and I'll open up that new PSD there as well. Yep. There it is. You can and see Nick, how it looks. It looks like maybe you are, never mind, everything's fine. Did that go okay? Everything's great. I have I currently have three views of your screen yes. and they're all at different timing. So we are doing <laughs> fantastic is how we're doing. Wonderful. I'll just look over okay. here. All right, so we're in Photoshop. Now we open yes. it in Photoshop and this is no longer Illustrator, but we have all of the editability in there, right? There you go. So there's our white square that came in for the smart objects. There's our frame. We have all these, the extras are all independent as well. I just didn't name them, you can see. So all of these come in and then the coolest thing is your live text and your extras come in at that. Now that text there as well, when I open here and I go to this, I'm, I'm literally still editable, which is really cool. The way it carries over from Illustrator to Photoshop. So let's say this is something you've built for a client. They can now take this and do anything they want. If that needs to be something new or like new feature or drive-through open or whatever it might be, 
they can have some fun with that and really kind of have some fun. Yep. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our smart objects one here. And like we did last week, if we right click on there, we are converting it to a smart object. So now, if you all remember, we have this new grid here. And if I double click here, now I get just that square. So this is where you can start bringing in cool stuff. So I found like this is uh, we are doing the which one was this new menu? All right. So I found this really tasty burger. This is a veggie burger tasty for me. <laughs> and I'm just going to get this nice and cropped really nicely in here. We can definitely make sure it's nice and big. But we're going to go back to this later when we get a chance because uh, Andrew's going to show you a few little things that we can do to kind of plus it up to our brand. So I'm going to hit save. We're going to go back over here. Whoops, save that. And we go here. There's our fun little burger. Now, just to show you a few things we can do while we're here, I'm going to go to the frame here. And just to give it a little pop, I'm going to give that some drop shadow with layer styles. Go to drop shadow. What's neat is you can already see because you have it in preview. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pick maybe the darker gray. Let's just probably go with the black because that will probably work. Our background is all gray. That's a new tip I've been learning a lot by watching some of the great Photoshop folks on uh, Adobe Live is this idea when you are using drop shadow to actually sample from the image you are talking about because you get that's a much smart. closer, right? So let's move it. Like I want to see how this is going to start looking. You can adjust all of these and see. Now I'm getting this really cool layered effect. You can see it looks like there is a, definitely a frame over that. So I can click on that and look great. And the only other thing I want to do is I want to get the Mystic Cafe logo a little bit more prominent as well. So let's find that. It's this one here. And it is, I believe, let me open this up. There we go. And it's that. So it's this whole group, correct? There it is. All right, yes. cool. Let's do the same thing. I, maybe an outer glow might be a cool one to do. Ooh. So we're going to go back to layer style and we go to outer glow. And you can see here's where you can have some fun with this as well. You can soften, open the size up a little bit. So maybe it just needs a little bit. And just like Andrew does, we're going to add a little bit of noise. <laughs> just a little. Because I think just, that helps, man, it's just right? just a little sprinkle. Just, yes, exactly. Oh, look at that. Do you see it? Do you just, see it? Just a little sprinkle. Look at that. So we've automatically got like a really cool setup. Now you could take it, you can export it as PNG, JPEG, whatever you want. But what I love to do is keep that master template or PSD that you've made. I keep these all AI versions, PSD versions, and then you make your PNGs and JPEGs specific to this. So maybe this is the one I would call, you know, burger week or whatever it might be, right? So you're keeping a really great a uh, system for not only you, but your client to start figuring out how to use and do that. So yeah. that's how I would do the first one here. And uh, what are you gonna do next, man? Yeah, so when I talk about consistency, I think about what are the elements that make something uh, look like that brand, right? So for social mm -hmm. media, I always try to set up, uh, here are the elements, and then I write an action. So I'm gonna talk about nice. actions real quick, uh, which we're getting a little more advanced here in Photoshop, which is hopefully good for you. Um, once you learn how to do something once in Photoshop, you never have to do it again because you can make an action. So hopping back, I've got that burger here, uh, same burger. And uh, let's do a treatment to this. So I want to uh, make sure that this burger is going to look a certain way for Ooh. our uh, for our kind of social media, right? Question, and, are yes. you using the one that's linked? So when I go back, will it have all the assets you've given? You know, I don't, I don't think so. Maybe. You have it from the library? Maybe is the answer. Yes, I have it from the library. Okay. Uh, I am Maybe not, is the answer. I am not <laughs> editing the one from the library currently. I have pulled it onto a different okay. artboard. So, gotcha. um, oh, it is linked though. We'll see what happens. Okay, let's, mm, all right, let's do it. Hold on. All right, so let's what's nice out. is Nick's working with an, an Adobe stock image. And so yes. I don't have the stock image, um, but it shows up in our shared library. I literally just clicked on that shopping cart and look at that. It has updated the image Perfect. and it hasn't, I mean, it took all the stuff off of it. And so nice. now I'm just going to double click on this burger and it will actually open in Photoshop for me. So now I'm editing the source. So we're going to do this. This is Nick's computer. This is mine. Okay. Nick, yes. Andrew, Nick, Andrew, I'm going to break something if I keep doing that. 
I know. Here's what we're going to do. I'm nervous is for you. I'm going to show you how to record an action. And I'm going to make edits to this. And when I save, everyone cross your fingers and chat, it will live update to Nick. So let's let's check out some social media so branding. Tell them again guide. why you're doing the action because you, yes. you don't want to redo this over and over again. I don't right? want to do this again and again. We're going to use more images and it'll be super mm -hmm. easy for me to do that on other images. So And we have a family image to use as well. So yes, we I'm going to figure out what I want to do first. And what I like okay. to do is find the colors that we're using, right? And so I know that we're using these Mythic Cafe colors right here. Uh, they're in the library that Nick and I are sharing. I could grab them from the image that Nick is using by just using the eyedropper tool. Um, but I'm gonna grab info and I've just grabbed these colors. Uh, and you right. can see that I've set my foreground and background color over here on the left, right? So mm -hmm. these are my foreground and background. And then I'm going to create a duo tone effect. So I'm gonna click right down here. Oh, let's go there, there we go. Right down here behind my head and I'm gonna do a gradient map. This is a fantastic way to make your images kind of pull into a cohesive look. Uh, and there we go, this actually looks pretty good. What a gradient map is doing is it's remapping the black and white to green and purple, right? Uh, if I wanna make some edits, I can click on this gradient right here and then just pull this in or pull this out to make it lighter or darker. And it's basically saying, right. hey, the, the whites are become green. Uh, maybe we want it to be a bit lighter. There we go. So that's pulling the midpoint. So the grays now are shifting. So it's nice and bright, uh, looking cool in our colors. And the next Excellent. thing that I wanna do is I probably want to add in some noise. We all know that I like noise. So I'm gonna make a new layer. Uh, I'm just gonna hit Control Shift N for new. And in this new layer, the way that I like to do noise is to set the blend mode to overlay and then set the fill with overlay neutral 50% gray. So I'll hit nice. okay and nothing happens, right? It looks like nothing happens because this is completely neutral. It's 50% gray being overlaid. But when I add noise to that 50%, then it is going to show through. So I'm gonna add 10% and just see what that looks like. All right, that's not quite enough because you won't be able to see it. We're gonna do, we're gonna go crazy here. I think I'm gonna do like a 40% noise. All right, so we're gonna do 40% noise. You can see on your screen, that is a lot of noise, but yeah. we wanna be able to see that. So I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see that this noise is now on the image, right? That looks great. Now I never like having crispy noise. And so I'm just gonna blur it a little bit by going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll blur it by like 0. 0.5. There you and you can see that it kind of blurred down. Let's do one, and there we go. We've got just that nice texture that kind of feels a little more rugged, right? So we've got yep. the noise. That looks pretty good. And then let's let's do one more thing here. I think that maybe let's add in, um, let's do, uh, you know what? Let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Yeah. I think that this is a good treatment. Okay. I don't really want to add any other things. Uh, we could add a border, but we already have that in there. So what I'm going to do is this is where we want to go. Let's delete it all. So the reason that I'm deleting it all is because I'm just going to write an action that's going to allow me to do this very quickly with a whole bunch of other things. Also, I've been talking with my hands and then realized that I wasn't even on screen. So just imagine <laughs> that I'm emoting toward the camera. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna click up here on actions. If you don't see that, you can go to window and actions. And then we're mm -hmm. gonna create a new folder real quick. And I'm gonna do a new folder. I'm just gonna name it uh, Mystic Photo uh, Green. That color that we're doing is green, right? That's mint? Let's do mint. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna hit okay. There's my new uh, folder. And then I'm gonna click on plus, and this is a new action. And this is going to be a uh, mint noise combo. We'll hit okay and we'll hit record. And when we hit record, every single thing that we do now is going to be recorded, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create that gradient map and you can see it has make adjustment layer right there. I'm gonna reverse it. That looks pretty good right there. Um, let's go ahead and change just a little bit that midpoint so that we can get it a little bit brighter. There we go. So hit okay. Now I want to create that new layer, Control Shift N, mm -hmm. and we are going to name this noise. Perfect. We're gonna set that to overlay and fill with neutral color. And watch what happens when I hit okay. Boom, set adjustment layer, make layer. It's adding all those things in for me. 
Now I want to add the noise. I'm gonna go to filter, noise, add noise. We're doing that 40%, let's do 50%, let's get crazy. Let's and we'll hit crazy. okay. Come on. You can see, add noise, add it to the list, great. And then we're gonna- You know what you just did noise. right there? You brought in the funk, you brought in the noise. Brought it, <laughs> get out. Stream's over everybody. <laughs> Stream's uh, over. Right. <laughs> so uh, now we're going to add the blur, we're gonna hit okay. And now we have that blur. So now I'm going to hit the stop right here and Perfect. it has stopped recording, right? So everything has stopped recording. These are all the steps. And what's great is I can delete these if I want and I can come yep. right back up here to mint noise combo and watch what happens. I hit play, oh. boom, done. You can all see the steps. we go in there, all that noise is there. It is blurred. All those steps happened in a second. So now, with that action saved, I can do it to as many photos as I want. I'm gonna save this and see what happens, Nick. Oh, Here yes. we go. So again, All Nick, right. can you pull up on your screen what yours looks like? So this is Nick's currently, yes. this is mine yep. currently. I am saving, it says no. Okay, hold on, let's see what happens if I try to close it. Yeah. Okay, it is so... <laughs> hey, question. Can you share the action? Uh, I can. Let's do that. Let's talk about that and I'll figure out how to do it. So what I can do is okay. I can literally no click on this Mystic Photo Mint and then I can yes. click on the hamburger up here and yes. do save actions. And that's going to allow me to export these actions. Um, and I go. can do Mystic Photo and just save that action. Let's throw it on my desktop uh, right there and we'll hit save. And now there is an action that is saved on my desktop. That's so great. If I close this, right? So I'm yep. not gonna save it because crazy things happened. Uh, that's fine. But maybe if I come back here and I try to right click and edit in Photoshop, let's see what happens there. Mm -hmm. So right click and let's see here, edit. So now my action should still be here. I can just okay. hit that real quick. It'll hit that, sounds good. Okay. And now let's see what happens if I just save it. Okay. Oh. I feel like it should just be updating that. Let's see. Let's see if we just save it as the JPEG. Maybe if I save as, maybe if there's there there's a way to do this, y'all. I swear that we're yeah. professionals. Uh, hold on. Let's yeah. try this. I'm gonna do save Can a copy. I... JPEG looks good to me. Let's override it and see if it explodes. Oh, that might work. Good luck, everyone. And the answer is no. I don't yeah. think that that worked. Uh, I don't That's... know why it's not doing it, but there is a way. I'll keep researching yeah. it. Uh, I, but I, I, you know, it was so funny when I first tried making actions and I hit the record. I was so pressed, thinking time had something to do with it, and it doesn't, right? It's not like it does it's not. It's not recording all that time that you're deciding on what to do. So don't be intimidated by it. It's actually quite a a, a fun little thing to do for that's, sure. That's hilarious to think that it's like, oh, of it, course, it's like, timed. You, it's timed. <laughs> it is a hundred percent timed. Um, all I right. love it. So we have that, um, and Nick, I'm actually going to show how easy it is for us yes. to. Uh, share an action. Let's do that. And and okay. like let's see what happens here, I guess. Um so I'm just through gonna... the cloud or through just cuz I know I've I've found ways that you can kind of you can export it, right? And then yeah, send so it you can somebody, export it. Right? Um I yeah. can't sync it in a library, but I can I send it to you. So, I'm Perfect. just going to slack it to you. So give me a second. Okay. We're going to yep. we're going to send it on through. And while while you're waiting a second, Nick do you want to tell everyone about what we're doing this year, what Office Hours is, and kind of where we're going? Do you know where we're going, wow. Nick? Ooh, let's do that. Do we that. know where we're going? I would assume we're going to 301. We we are going to 301. Sense. We yes. have... Um, but we have another workshop in between. Don't yeah. We? we. Oh, man. This is a bad setup because we can't talk about what we're doing next, actually. Um, oh, that's right. That's, okay. that's kind of the... So next week we'll be back and we'll be showing you uh, InDesign is where we're going next. So we'll be talking about oh, InDesign, right. doing some uh, InDesign essentials, getting a little more advanced. I'll show you how to do data merging. Um, but then we can't tell you where we're going after that. <laughs> <laughs> 301 is coming though. All right. So Nick, I have sent you that um, action. Gotcha. If you want to grab that in Slack. And we're going to let Nick try that action over on his side of things. Okay. So give me one second here before we get this going. Can and... I send this into a library is the question? Uh, 
Okay, hold on. I would... Yeah, are you going to try that? Uh, yeah, I'm going to save it as a cloud doc and then see if I can share it to you. So uh, if you haven't worked with cloud docs, they're amazing. You just click on share here in Photoshop uh, and it will create it as a cloud document. So it just exists everywhere. And then I can share it with Nick. And so in theory, um, I think maybe I can put it into a library. We'll see what happens here. All right, so I can invite Nick uh, to edit this, but I just sent him the action. Nick, did you get the action that I sent over in Slack? Let's see. We're looking for it. Why did it not download? Give me one more second. We are downloading it again, and we are putting it on desktop. And there's save. There we go. Show and finder. I still, okay. I still okay. am like slightly confused why it's not letting me save to update this. Gotcha. So we have the we have the action and I'm going to be loading it, I believe, in Photoshop. Correct? Yes. So to do okay. that, go to your actions and then you're just going yes. to click on the burger menu uh, and hit load actions. OK, there we go. So we're going to go to load actions. There we go. And then from there, there uh, you need to find where you just downloaded it to. We'll cut back to my screen while Nick opens his downloads. OK, let's see here. That is. MYS tick. For some reason, there's not. It will. It is not allowing me to choose anything from here. So oh, fun. There we go. Okay, open. All right, let's see. So now I think we have opened it here, correct? Yep. There we so go. It is named Mint Noise Control. So if you click on your burger and then just click on that mint, let's see what happens. This, yep. So here and then. And then just hit play. Down play. at the bottom, right oh, there. Oh, but I have to have smart. Okay, there we go. Fingers smart crossed, everybody. Open. Look at that. We did it. It worked. I promise we're professionals. Look at us go. Look at us go. Love it. So that's a Love great it. way to bring cohesion to your social media if you are working through. So oh, great. Nick, um, have you dropped these frames? Can you drop the frames into the library for me? Because I want to show yeah, everybody do that. how to really set up for social media. Just a frame alone, or do you want? Um, uh, what do give you Give me want? each of those frames, just the whole, yeah. the whole thing. The whole, so, the whole thing. Yep. All right. So, so cutting back here, I'm going to show you all how to set up for social media, and we're going to do Instagram carousels because that's what the oh, description promised. Um, and we're going to be doing some uh, carousels, aren't we? Carousels. So I'm going to do 1080 by 1080. So that is the size. I, there we go. There's no information for me to give you of why and like the strategy. That's just what the size is. So 1080 by 1080. No variations, that's what you're gonna be using. So we're gonna hit create right here and it will create a new artboard for us. So we can use this to start to create some of our assets, start to play with our social media, all the fun that we have. Um, but I wanna make a carousel. So let's do one real quick. And I'm just gonna look in my library here and uh, uh, Nick, is, Nick has put those in so I can see them and I can click and drag them onto my artboard. Thanks, Nick. You got it. All right, so we got one of them in here and this is our frame. Uh, looks pretty good. And I do wanna put that burger in the background. So I'm just gonna drag the burger out of that library and put it in the background here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all getting hungry. <laughs> we are all getting hungry, yes. Uh, let's see here, let's get this white piece gone. So I'm just using the, um, Oh boy, why did my words oh. stop working? The magic wand tool, thank you, Nick. I'm using the magic wand tool here, which is W, and I'm just gonna click on all of these white spaces so there that I go. can mask them out. And then with this selected, I'm gonna go ahead and click right here, add layer oh. mask, and we'll need to invert that. So invert. right click <laughs> and uh, invert, or just control I. I will say the first thing I ever learned because I was going about things on Photoshop the complete wrong way. But inverse was the game changer. Because yep. every time I did something, it would be that response. And there we go. I just ran my uh, action again and we've got the burger. So this looks great, but I want more. I'm gonna show you the ultimate hack, the absolute ultimate hack. Uh, we missed a little piece right here. I'm just gonna brush this out go. real quick. There we go. Uh, so here's the ultimate hack. If you are trying to do multiple pieces of Instagram content as a carousel. Here's what I like to do. This is crazy, but we're gonna use rulers. And if you don't have your rulers on, you can add those rulers by coming up here and going to view and then going to rulers. So turn your rulers on right there. 
and I'm just grabbing a guide that goes over to the edge of the artboard, right? Click, or I just click and drag out that guide right there. Okay, gotcha. here's where it gets crazy. We don't just want one, we want four images in this carousel. So what I can do is I can go to image, canvas size, and then the width. So for now, um, let's go ahead and do two, right? So watch what happens yes. here. So we want 1080 by 1080, but we want two of them. I don't need to do math because math is, uh, we have computers. We're, we're designers. We're designers. We're not mathematicians. <laughs> I can literally I was told type there would in, be no math. Yes, 1080 <laughs> by 1080 times two, and watch what happens when I hit tab. Oh, it did the math for me. Um, I don't think a lot of people know this, but yes, Adobe does math for you. So it did that, all the math, and I do want it to go anchored to the left. So that means that everything's going yes. to extend over to the right, I believe. I might've hit the wrong one, but we'll see what happens. If I hit okay, there we go. It has added another artboard for me to the side. Now, watch mm -hmm. this, watch this. Are you ready? Oh, I want more? Okay, cool. Let's just grab another uh, ruler and push it over to the side. And then again, we're gonna go to image, canvas size, and this time I actually, I need this canvas to be 1080 uh, nice. by times three this time. So we're gonna do times three and we're gonna make sure that it's staying to the left. We'll hit okay. Oh my goodness, look at that. Three perfect sized images nice. with the rulers and the guides. And now I can come in here and just design on this, right? So it's, can, it's technically still one artboard. You can't do the multiple artboard, correct? Oh, oh Nick. Oh, you, say oh. you say words, you say words that you wow. know not. So uh, this would yikes. be a way to do it. it. This would be a little more complicated because I would need to use the cropping tool, which is just C. Yes. And I'd use the cropping tool and change it to one by one square. And then I'd literally just click and drag and you can see those rulers and the guides that I've made are actually gonna yes. snap. So I can export these individually if I wanted to, just using that crop tool, Wonderful. but I want to make sure, oops, oops. Oh my gosh. Oh, that looks good. Every, everybody, I'm about, Photoshop's about to explode. That's what, Oh wow, okay. yeah. So it's I like, could use this doing? and I could crop in to each of these sizes, but I don't really want to do that. So sure. if I just had one of these, I could add more by using the artboard tool. People don't know this exists either. It is right underneath the move tool. If you click and hold on the move tool, you can get the artboard tool right there. And all I need to do is set the size. So 1080 mm -hmm. by 1080 up here on top and then click Just on click. the plus right here and watch what happens. Oh, mind. I need click on the plus, yeah. sorry. And then just click. Yeah, I was gonna say mind blown. I did something wrong. Oh, I did the size wrong. Oh. But if I do 1080 here, it's gonna fix it for me. Oh my gosh. So there, it's fixed it for me and check this out. Watch what happens. Okay, I have one, great. I need another one. Oh, let's just click on this plus. Another oh, one, perfect. okay, another one. Oh, or you can right. go up. You can, you can do one above it. Or you can go up. It's like a game of snake. And so the, the best yeah. thing about this is we have all of our artboards here. And now if I wanted to, I could simply grab the artboard tool again and just click and drag so that these are yes. sitting right next to each other. And they snap nice to each other because they, technically that's your, you don't want any overlap that it should be butted up right up against it for that seamless carousel. Exactly, so these nice. are now kind of just over each other looking good. And this is the way that you would export if you were doing a carousel, you would set it up throughout each of these to kind of create that illusion. Uh, nice. Nick, you had something going on over on your side. Where were you going with your Photoshop? I saw a oh, mock-up. I was up. literally just going to build a quick little mock-up of our Mystic Cafe. And I figured if they're gonna do some merch, they're gonna have some fun having stuff like that. So I wanted to see if we could try doing something really quick with just this. Let's do it. And I think last time we were talking a little bit about trying to figure out how this would work. Um, one thing I've just been trying to figure out a little bit too is the idea of when you're putting things on here, how to keep make it look more realistic. Uh, you could obviously build the smart object, but because this is kind of a unique one here, it's kind of cool. But again, you could just do all this kind of stuff and bring some of the stuff over. And then what I found is like, I've been using Multiply, I've been using a few other things just to see how those things would work. And in layers, you just kind of walk right over here, dropping in Multiply, and you can get that kind of, at least some of that color going through there, that's there. But I know there's some other ways, I've been looking at some of the stuff as far as 
where you can actually warp and do things on your own and kind of create the the cylinder shape on there as well. Correct? Yes. There's that. There's that as well. Um, but I, here we go. There we go. So you can see all of a sudden you can get something really, really cool. And the other thing was we had a quick little mock-up. I can make that as well. If there's something else you wanted to show in conjunction to what you were working with, totally up to you where you want to go. Let's do it. So let me hop back here because someone had a question about exporting it. multiple artboards. Yes, you can do that. So uh, we could get in here and work with all these templates and do this. We want to show you as many things as we can. So I'm not going to get super like designy with these. Sure. Uh, I'm going to kind of show you the concept and hope that you design on your own. And hopefully this is helpful. But what we can do is I'm going to click here, right? And let's actually just do three of these so that we can do an Instagram post. Um, nice. I can just select that artboard and just delete it. Just yeet it into the universe. Uh, Adobe Sensei. So I'm going to grab <laughs> the text tool and I'm just going to type in here. Um, let's do office hours. Always. That's always the standby. It's always the standby. It really is. I'm going to grab this fun purple that we had in the background here. And I'm just going to blow this up. So I'm going to make this a lot bigger. And it looks like there's a problem. So the problem here is like, why is it not completely, we're going to stretch it. Why is it not going over all the artboards? That's because it's only locked to one artboard. But the magic, if you want to do different carousels that are overlapping, all you need mm -hmm. to do is right click and you're going to click on duplicate layer. So once we duplicate that layer, check this out. What we can do is we can say we want it copy and the destination we want to be maybe on artboard two. So now I hit okay. And on artboard two, now we have that layer. Why did it resize? Excuse me. Pardon me. <laughs> Pardon. Excuse me, sir. What is it doing? Sir, sir. All right. So here's what we're going to do. This is not, this is not the way that I want to do it, but we only have 10 minutes. So this is the way that we're going to do it uh, just so I can show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag this so that it lines up so you can see uh, when it overlaps. So this is not the ideal way to do this. This is how we're going to do it right now because design's all about ingenuity, right? Um, yeah. And somebody's asking copy and paste in place. Probably that would work, um, but also maybe not. And this I know is going to work. So this is how we're going to show you. I'm so sorry. Um, I know that there is a way to do it, but we're just going to do this to where it has office hours. There we go. Looks good. So it's spanning all three. And the reason that I'm kind of just throwing it together is because I want to show you how to export. I think that's more important. So I'm going to go up here to file and then we're going to go to export and then we're going to go artboards to files. So clicking on export artboards to files, it is going to bring up this and it's going to ask us for the destination, the file type. Uh, I want these to be PNGs. Uh, let's turn on some export options. Transparency if we want. Uh, I don't really need any of that. Artboard file name, I don't need that either. Um, but I do want it to show artboard content only, not overlapping areas, okay? Uh, okay. I want to include the background and then I want to click on browse and that will send me to where I want to send it to. Let's send it to my desktop. Sure. Whatever. Uh, we'll hit okay. And from there we're going to hit run and it's going to export each of those. And you can actually see it, which is kind of cool is that it's opening each of those artboards individually and then exporting them for me. So here's artboard number two and then here's artboard number three. Boom, done, successful, winner. Now, Nick, I know that you're doing things over there. We don't have nice. time for you. We are gonna keep going because I wanna show Let's go. if we wanted to schedule this. Man, we are, we are on it, right? Right, we exported, yes. we exported a full carousel. We exported some posts. Check this out. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go to a new website, brand new, hot off the press from your friends at Adobe. And that is schedule.adobe.com hottest new spot everyone's here it's the cool kids so fetch um the and hottest say, new spot is adobe creative cloud yes schedule. yes <laughs> new york's hottest club is adobe office hours uh, all right so content scheduler is new Show in adobe more. express just schedule.adobe.com and we can click on the date that we want to schedule for so maybe we want to go out today and i can simply add it to instagram which is what i want right here and i'm going to add media so with this, it is going to ask me my device or Creative Cloud Express, or I can just drag and drop. So I am gonna open just a little finder window um, elsewhere. 
All right, and then drag it over. So uh, from my des desktop, I'm gonna grab all three of those images and just load them in here. You can see all those images are going in and we're gonna upload all three of them. And yes, someone in chat is asking, didn't I schedule post last? Yes, I schedule so much stuff and I forget and then it ends up getting yeah. posted. This hopefully <laughs> won't, I don't know, we'll see what happens. So I have all three here and it's telling me that this post requires mobile app. If you are posting carousels, using Adobe Sched or using the content scheduler, you do need to use the mobile app. What it will do is it will notify you and say, hey, you have uh, a post that is ready to be posted, right? It will have all of these images in there for you in the correct order I gotcha. with your caption. And then you just have to hit the post button, right? So uh, caption, this is, hold on, we need, we need this in all caps. This is office hours. Got it. So that's our caption in there. We can add a first comment if we want to be able to uh, put it into relevant hashtags, that kind of stuff. But we are simply going to schedule this um, for, uh, oh man, I, I need to remember to delete this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Scheduling it <laughs> Although on Although it's Sunday promoting the show, so that's fine. At three, yeah. And we're gonna hit done. And now when I hit schedule, all three of these are ready to post and we can click here and see all three of these are ready to post. Uh, I believe that we can actually see a draft so we can click on preview and look oh, at this. That's great. So it has, this oh, is office wow. hours. If I click, what? you can see seamless, seamless. That is really great. So one comment for all three, because that's technically the way it works when you're posting a multi-image, yep. which is fantastic. Exactly. I love it. And you can continue to add up to, I'm assuming, what can you do, 10 slides? I think that's the max, one? yeah, I think 10. Yeah. And the cool thing here is if I wanted to, and don't do this, because nobody likes, nobody likes people that do this, but if I wanted to, I could schedule all three of these to go up at the same time as different posts. So that it would ah, show on my go. profile, right? I would do one post, two posts, three posts, and then it would show on my profile just like this. Oh, you gotta get really seconds. savvy with that because you gotta load the last one first. backwards. Yeah, yes. if you're gonna have it all three across in your feed. Yes, there you go. backwards. Uh, That's and fantastic. Elizabeth in chat is asking, is there an Office Hours Instagram? There's not, but you can follow Nick or I. Um, we, yeah. never plug, <laughs> there you go. we never plug our social media and you know what? We're so bad. You know we're what? Not, we're, not, we're not good at this thing, you know? We're, you know what? Here we go. This is just shameless uh -oh. promotion, y'all. We're Let's doing do it. Let's do it, shameless. So if you want to follow our guy, Nick Longo, ladies Which and gentlemen. Which hasn't posted in probably quite a while. <laughs> Longo Designs on Instagram, at Longo Designs on that good old social go. media. Nick, look at this quality content that you could be following. Quality, right? thank you. There um, you go, that you could be following. This too could be in your be life. Yours. And you could see I have switched over to the three kind of series thing. I think you, were you doing that for a while too or no? I definitely do that. And I archive posts to make sure that they stay yes. in the grid. Nice. Oh, they're off there right now. Oh, that drives me crazy. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I know, it's because yeah. I posted about office That's hours. always the worst. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so you can follow me on social media as well if you want to check out. Uh, and this actually is a great example of that, what we were talking about with creating social media carousel. So this is, uh, some branding that I did for a client and I advised them, here's the frame you're using and then here are the stickers that you're using and created yeah. all those as separate assets so they can apply them to wherever they are going to be posting on social media. So very, very I easy thing that. to make small elements that you can stack on top of things, right? And I'm, I'm seeing all my, my students chiming in and liking your stuff, look at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nick, your students cool. love me. Oh, they um, do. <laughs> you you got to pick and choose. If, I mean, if we're having a exactly. fight, I, 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 I'd, uh, I'd take, take it down. All right, we got about five minutes left and uh, I want to reserve those five minutes for your questions. Chat, if Ooh, you have questions, things that you want to know about Photoshop, about artboards, about social media, hit us up in chat. Let us know. If you're watching the replay, comment down below. Uh, mm -hmm. Leave your comment on YouTube and- Leave a comment. Leave a comment. We'll check it out and maybe incorporate it into a further, into a- into an uh, future episode. Future talk. episode. Thank you, Nick. Nick, just, do you want to take over and talk for like thirty just, seconds while I re regain I'm my composure? Finishing off all of your sentences there. I would love that. Like, give us a few questions, not only live but even on the YouTube videos. That would be great. Yes. It's we we're gonna run out of stuff eventually here, guys. So you better you. <laughs> uh, give us give us some tips. Nick, what here's a need? question for you. That's oh. a great question from chat. Yeah. Do yes. you see that question in chat? 
animated social graphics. Yeah, you know how to animate in Photoshop? No, I have All right, started time to learn. watching some. I watched some demos. It's time kind of to fun. learn. I'm actually starting to do uh, After Effects. All right, we got five minutes, so I'm going to yeah. show you how to animate in Photoshop. Oh, um, quick, quick so tutorial. Go. yeah, let's do this. So what I want to do is I'm going to just uh, move the photo in the background. There's a bunch of things that I could do here, but I just want to move the photo in the background real quick to show you what it looks Great. like. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our layer right here. And then I'm going to turn on window and go to timeline. This is the magic. Ah, yes. So I've we can create a video timeline. We can create a frame animation. Uh, and for now, let's go ahead and do a video timeline. So I want to go ahead and treat our photo in the background again with that action. Just hit play, mm -hmm. boom, done. Then we're going to create that video timeline. And from here, I want to find the burger. So I'm just going to scroll down. You can see there's our fresh, tasty burger, as it's named, which I think is hilarious. Yes. Um, and I'm going to scroll down here and see that there is transform, there is opacity, there is style. So what I want to do is I'm going to have this kind of move across the screen. Um, and doing the video timeline allows us to transition smoothly. Frames is like stop motion. So it's basically just image, image, uh, image, image, difference. image. Perfect. So, Frame by frame is good, but this can be helpful. So we're going to transform. We're going to click on this little stopwatch, which is basically just telling us, hey, this is where we want to start, right? This is this is the place that we start. And we're going to start with this kind of, ooh, let's do that. Let's just have it mm. off to the side, right? Yeah. And then we're going to go and zoom ahead a little ways, and we're going to have it somewhere else. And we don't have to click on the clock or anything anymore. We can simply click and drag and I'm just holding shift so that it moves over. Nice. And right there, it is moving the burger. And this is actually interesting because we're moving the burger layer and not the noise layer. And so it's oh, gonna look really cool. Interesting. So what we can do is we can actually click and drag on this timeline. And this is gonna like literally murder my computer while I'm streaming, but who cares? Uh, and I can hit play and watch what happens. Very slowly it is showing us but it will yes. move from one side to the other, right? It is very slowly moving, but you can use that as an effect to move your graphics and create a social media graphic. And it always does this on the first attempt, right? Kind of um, the slower. It doesn't, I don't believe that Photoshop renders like video does. It will do that gotcha. because it's not, it, it will do that. But if I go up here and I go to file, export and export. render video, there so it is. Check That's this out. when it will um, do it. The button of render video is right there. Mm -hmm. And then I can render this video. And I want to put it on my desktop. And we're just going to do burger. Cool. We'll hit OK, render. And it's going to render that video for me. And I think this should be pretty quick. Uh, Photoshop's actually really, really good at rendering video. Um, I am concerned about the fact that there's noise on this because that always kills the file that could size. Be. Yeah. Um, so. It is... I've seen this being used on um, to make uh, anything cylinder or can turn, and you can see the complete artwork. So just like you did, you bring in the entire artwork spread, and you have it move, and you can get what looks like a spinning can or a spinning bottle, spinning jar with all of your art on it. Yep, absolutely. Um, so doing frame by frame, we could have had it so that there's like a frame where the noise is gone the frame where the burger's in a different place, but it's uh, literally yes. going to jump from one to one to one. So it is still exporting this right here. It is a short video, but I think that noise is just like killing us. I should have turned it off, um, but <laughs> it will be done. And you'll be able to see how to animate. Now, animation's also something that you can do in Adobe Express. Um, and I do want to do a shameless plug real quick. If you're not following Adobe Express on TikTok, um, Adobe Express what? and Adobe Video are on TikTok now. Um, and there may be more TikToks coming from other channels. Who knows? So get on TikTok, follow the Adobe channels, um, and there's some great content there. And let's give you some of that sweet, delicious Boyga's content. Look at that. Look at there that Boyga. Is. Look at that Boyga. Mm. It's a good Boyga. And then you get and then you get two or three little pop-ups coming on saying order now. Yep. You got it done. Look at that. Yes. I love how it goes behind the screen of the noise. It does That's look killer. really good. And, and again, that is very, uh, this is this is the perfect example when I'm talking about social media is all about elements, right? We have the frame, mm -hmm. we have the colors, and then the color treatment and the noise on that image. You could yeah. put anything behind here and that noise helps you to understand that it's the Mythic Cafe brand.
brand, right? It's all those little visual yeah. cues that help cue you in to social media and how to build for social media. More um, importantly, the, it's the, mo the motion and having some movement is like key at this point now. I think it's so expected now. Every time you see something, there it is. Yep. It's always, it's, it's so cool to see. Yep, it's so easy. So thanks for joining us, y'all. Um, we hope that you have a fantastic weekend. If you're watching the replay, it's Memorial Day weekend. Go outside. Yeah. Um, thank Take you for Monday watching off. the replay. Thank you. Yeah, you've already hit the completion rate. You did the episode. Now shut it down and go outside. Uh, go grill a burger. There you go. Or a uh, veggie burger. Or a veggie burger. That's right. Nick <laughs> Nick, Nick is a veggie burger guy. Um, all right. We will talk to you next week where we'll be talking about InDesign Essentials, showing you a little bit more of Adobe InDesign. Until then, have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Bye, guys.